I think it's just time to say goodbye to my iPad. Like, I want Apple to make a two-in-one peak performance laptop and hybrid, but they just can't do it. Good morning, Drew! I sense a huge amount of disappointment from you today. I would love to change this around if in some way, shape, or possible. I don't know, Tim, you kind of broke my heart. This was my favorite Apple product for a time, and now I just feel like it's a useless doorstop of a wedge that I have to worry about bending in my bags. Drew, you paid eight terabytes for your MacBook Pro, you have no idea how dang profitable it is for us to sell those higher storage options. So as a thank you, I'm gonna put you in head of charge of revamping the iPad Pro to make it take full advantage of its current hardware? Oh, no, you, you didn't let me uh, finish my thought. You can start a new project where without causing cannibalization between iPads and Macs, you can show us how a two-in-one is supposed to be. Oh, a, a two-in-one... So, it, it can't be this? I can't make it an iPad? No. iPads are iPads, and that's why they cannot do any more than they currently can. That's why iPad OS 16 has been delayed. Really? It's been delayed? You couldn't even figure out how to get the weather app on an iPad? It's really hard, Drew. Please shut up. Get to work! Am I at least getting paid for this gig? Absolutely not. Good luck. <sighs> okay, let's make my dream Mac. So I've talked about iPads being two-in-ones for probably years at this point, especially ever since Apple started supporting keyboard and trackpad support on iPads, but I want to take it in a different direction because I've argued with a plethora of you fans out there that seem to watch all my videos and yet disagree with everything I say. It's kind of shocking, but many of you have said that the iPad is just too limited. You know, it doesn't have the right thermal architecture, it doesn't have fans, it doesn't have battery life as good as a Mac, and maybe that's why they don't put Mac OS on there because it's just too RAM demanding and there's no way you could get a fully functional Mac OS on an iPad because the hardware is more limited than we think and iPad OS is just built to be fundamentally limited so that it can run on the inferior thermal architecture on the inferior battery. I totally disagree with that personally. I think it would be fine if the battery life was just a little bit shorter but it could do a lot more. But let's say you're right. Let's say Apple doesn't like that idea because it's too bizarre and asking too much of the iPad hardware. So in today's video I'm pitching my idea as to how I would do a Mac 2-in-1, not an iPad 2-in-1. What is the difference, many of you may ask? Well, in this particular video, I actually want Apple to take some inspiration from a product that hasn't been touched in a while, but I think was really underrated, the Surface Studio. Hey, that studio name sounds familiar, doesn't it? Apple's actually starting to mainstream that name now with the Mac Studio, and you've noticed that across the Mac lineup, we have dozens of MacBooks to choose from. The laptop line is honestly a little bit distorted, and in terms of the desktop, top world. We have the dated cheese grater Mac Pro, which time is limited. We've got the Mac Studio, which is basically the most powerful Mac ever. And for people on more of a budget, we have the Mac Mini. And then there's this weird little ugly iMac in there. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. Basically, what I'm trying to say in today's video is that if you're going to do an iMac, especially in the realm when Mac Studios exist, and for $1,800, you can get 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, tons of Thunderbolt options, and even frontal I.O. with an SD card slot even the $50,000 Mac Pro doesn't have an SD card slot. Like, that's just such an insane value, and no, it's not an all-in-one, but you get a lot of performance out of that. I feel like if Apple is to return to making something different from a tower and different from a laptop and kind of revitalize that iMac line, they should do something different, you know? I, I like to say to myself, think different when it comes to Mac products because Apple's good at separating themselves from the competition. It's just a little phrase I came up with and no one else. But I'm essentially pitching an iMac Studio of sorts. So we had the iMac Pro. They basically released it once. It was essentially a stopgap holding people over for the Mac Pro. But it was a very good value, but didn't really stand out from the rest of the iMac line. And we have already seen what happens when you try to make an iMac geared towards everyday consumers. It's colorful and the bezels blend in with the drywall and that's fine. I'd love to see the sales numbers on it though. I don't think they're very good. But if you're trying to make an iMac for the studio, I think they could easily adopt the Surface Studio approach and make it kind of a two-in-one product that is dedicated for the studio. That's why this is a stationary product. There's no battery to worry about. I'm not in favor of Apple copying like the Surface Laptop Studio or the Surface Book back in the day where it's like a Mac with a keyboard and trackpad and everything and then you just kind of rip your entire laptop in half to put it in tablet mode because when you do that you lose out on all the performance and all the battery that's baked into that keyboard. No, because I'm pitching a desktop device, this does not 
not have battery to worry about. And similar to the Surface Studio, you can put all of the internals and all of the performance and power into a little base that could be maybe a little bit bigger than a Mac Mini, maybe closer to the size of a Mac Studio, but not quite as tall. But attached to that Mac Studio, shimmering, glistening arms that pivot on a giant, gorgeous canvas. But this is not an iPad. We still call it an iMac Studio, but once you swivel this entire iMac down, that's when it can convert into iPad OS, and you could take advantage of a touch operating system. And yes, this may require some work from the iPad OS team, so I apologize in advance for this, but yeah, you could even have a virtual keyboard with a numeric keypad and everything down there. If you're using iPad apps that need more input and that kind of data, you could of course still use the included Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse if you wanted to when it's flat, but can you imagine an iMac with either a 27 or 32 inch display? Of course, because this is a concept, we can make it pro motion enabled, 120 hertz, so that when you're drawing on this massive canvas, you have incredibly low latency with Apple Pencil 2 connectivity. So yeah, the iMac Studio would be the first time ever an Apple Pencil is now compatible with a Mac, except you're not limited by the 12.9 inch screen size of an iPad Pro. Now you have this giant canvas that is big enough to do very, very intricate artwork and painting with, and I could see this being very popular in like universities that have lots of money to spend on their machines. I even went to a community college that had a whole computer lab full of Mac Pros, so I know they've got money for this. This would not be a cheap iMac for any means, but having an Apple Pencil 2 with the extreme precision and high refresh rate of that display that allows you to draw with extreme detail on 3D models or on 2D painting applications that are already optimized for iPad, now you just have infinitely more space to work with than an iPad does, but it's also a fully fledged Mac because you can easily fold it back upright, and as soon as you put it back in the upright position, it can switch back to Mac OS. We can put in the same great I.O. and same great silicon that we put in the Mac Studio and perhaps have an M1 Ultra or if this is the future, M2 Ultra, M3 Ultra. Maybe the base model ships with a Max version just for people who don't need all of that performance. But can you imagine a machine that was so capable to handle high intensive video editing, whether it's shot on red or you're documenting 3D environments with motion capture cameras and then be able to power all of that on a Mac that's all in one design and then swivel that entire display down and use a stylus or use a touch interface when you want to, in a more personal way, engage with that 3D model or draw on top of that 3D model with a singular device. And of course, when you're done, the Apple Pencil 2 could just magnetically slap along the side. And because of this big giant canvas being a touch display, it would need to be beefed up a little bit more than your traditional MacBook display lid. But I think that thickness would allow it to have one equal size bezel all the way around and even maybe Face ID on the front. We know the iPad Pros can handle Face ID, and because this is a desktop, and because it's going to be used in studio environments, probably would be used by YouTubers a lot, or small business owners, basically artists that may appreciate having a true depth camera system on there for facial tracking for more virtual creators out there, and people that want to take advantage of those programs that can track your face. Plus, it's just a great biometric, and if multiple people are using this, like at a school or a university, they could walk up to it, and a student's profile could be saved by the true depth camera system. It just recognizes their face opens their profile with their documents, student goes to a different class, a new student comes in, unlocks with Face ID, there's all the documents and everything. So, yes, it's very much like Windows, hello, I get that. I spent a lot of time with a high-level Microsoft employee when I was up in Washington, so I may have a little bit of a Microsoft sheep growing on me today, but all I know is that Apple has incredibly good silicon, and right now there's not really an iMac for studios or for professionals out there. We just have the kitchen iMac that's supposed to blend in with the drywall and have pretty colors on the front, but I think if Apple's going back to the iMac, which Mark Gurman has talked about them doing with an iMac Pro or a higher-end iMac of sorts, they should do something different. Now that we have the Mac Studio sitting at a much cheaper price point than the iMac Pro used to sit at, I think they should go a little bit above and beyond with this one. Of course, go all out with a mini LED, the extreme dynamic range, but I do think this would be an incredibly useful device for video thumbnails out there for a lot of creators and 3D modeling software, basically anything you need an iPad for, whether it's note-taking, it kind of just turns into your own little mini whiteboard that you can have at your desk, but that also converts into a fully-fledged Mac. I think this form factor can be done right, and Microsoft showed a very, very beautiful way of implementing it. It was just limited by its hardware, and the silicon they put inside that thing was laptop grade, whereas I think with Apple Silicon being so incredibly power efficient and still really high-performing, this could allow for desktop class performance in a quiet and compact form factor that also allows for a display canvas that you 
won't find anywhere else in the world. High refresh rate, high dynamic range, the best biometrics in the business, and yeah, bake in some really epic speakers. Apple's audio team is always fantastic when it comes to their higher end setups, and I'm sure this would be no exception. So that's my pitch, Tim. That's what I think the iMac Studio should be, and why you should do something different if you do return to that desktop all-in-one space. That's the whole concept of an all-in-one, right? Is someone who doesn't want to have a tower, a monitor, and speakers, and all these separate things. If people are buying an iMac, and they want it to be high-end, let that also be the best iPad that's ever been made. No, it's not mobile, so you can't take it with you, but it's huge, and it would give you so much more flexibility when drawing or 3D modeling on that big display with the Apple Pencil 2, and that way you don't have to have a Mac and an iPad. But of course, this thing could cost whatever Apple wants, because this hardware is going to be expensive. Getting a display panel that big and a touchscreen that big, it's not cheap, so I fully expect the iMac Studio could cost $5,000, maybe $6,000, and of course, as cool as that product sounds, $6,000 is not going to cannibalize any iPad. Even if you buy the maxed out iPad Pro, that thing is mobile, that thing you can take with you, it's got rear-facing cameras on it and everything, so if you need a device to take with you, people are still going to be buying iPads, but I want to expand that Apple Pencil 2 functionality and that touch optimization that iPad OS has onto a Mac, and of course you'll have no cannibalization here to worry about because it would cost more than a Mac Studio, so if all you needed was performance, you still got the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio, that's your go-to. If you want an iPad to just be an iPad and nothing else, you still got your iPads, and the MacBooks aren't going to be an alternative to this, so I'm all in favor of Apple making a gorgeous, very expensive, but very capable iMac Studio, and if you disagree, tell me why you're wrong in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you all in the next one.